Hey, yo, what's good? What's good? What's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the world podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I'm one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We have DJ Never here. Yo, what up? We got Jamie the Great. Yeah. DJ D Miles is MIA again. He's getting his ass fixed. He's getting his legs fixed. He's all yeah, bro- he's, he's, the whole he's body all fixed. broke. He's all fucked he's like up. He's like the the six million dollar yeah. man. That's fucked up, man. Right? <laughs> he's all fucked up. <laughs> so he's getting be rebuilt. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yo, we have a very, very special guest today, man. Like, dates back to my my days in New York when we was clubbing. Great DJ, great fucking DJ. Like, he's focused on crypto trading and investing recently. He's got 30 years, I think, experience in the investment world right now. In light of everything that's been going on, there's been, like, a real investment revolution. You know, I have a bunch of homies in New York. We have all family. We have everyone in our circle is talking about investments now. They want to They want to play with stocks they want to get into crypto they want to get more information on this especially what happened with gamestop and guys like elon musk announcing that they're going to get into crypto so i wanted to bring an ally onto the podcast a dj informant you know like a brother at arms one of our <laughs> dj brothers i wanted to bring him to the podcast i want to welcome uh scott melker What's up, man? That was quite quite an intro, man. Things are good. Yeah. Things are good, yeah. man. It's yeah. good to good to catch up with you fools after yeah after such a long time. It's, it's, <laughs> it's been a long time. I haven't probably talked to you in like fifteen years, maybe. Like, right? It, it might be. Yeah, I don't know. Ever since I was running your remixes at shitty, dingy ass <laughs> bars in the East Village, what? I mean, the, you know, the the the. Uh, Look for me, young pe- <laughs> oh, uh, the everyday like the people. Most <laughs> everyday people joined. Like yeah. I, I, if that was on vinyl, I would have wore it out like ten <laughs> times. <so. laughs> the, the notorious O three Bonnie and Clyde with everyday people mashup. Yeah, yep. you did. Yo, you had you you had a insane SoundCloud page. You were doing producing and doing all this yeah. stuff. You were actually one of the first DJ victims of uh, like that felt the wrath of copyright infringement on streaming, right? Cause you had, yeah, yeah. You had like thousands. I, I was like, you had thousands yeah. of followers on SoundCloud, right? Yeah, I was at like fifty million listens or something Oof. on SoundCloud, yeah. and then oh. Universal, Universal came after me. You know, it, it was kind of there was that wave when it was happening to everybody at the same time. Yeah, you know, when SoundCloud, mm-hmm. like it was just takedown, takedown, takedown. Yeah, I mean, it wiped me out honestly. So like when that account got frozen and taken down, that also removed like the SoundCloud widget playing on every blog that had ever posted my music so like just going down on soundcloud effectively like erase, erased your whole presence online everywhere you know mm-hmm. what i mean so like all the like hype them number one hits like you go on hype them and hit play and it wouldn't play no more or, like you click on one of the blogs and it wouldn't be there anymore i mean that was really kind of like the beginning of the end of music for me like right and as terrible as it was at the time it actually sort of allowed a transition into something that's been more beneficial to me so i guess there was a a silver lining, but yeah. And you know, I worked for a company called Legit Mix. I don't know if you even remember them, but like it was sort of a SoundCloud competitor that allowed DJs and producers to post remixes and actually pay the copyright holder. And it was really interesting, but at the end of the day, I don't think people really cared about paying the copyright holder. You know what I mean? Yeah, we all just want to bootleg and yeah. Yeah, because I was, I, I'm in a group chat with Rock the Con, Ross One, and MoMA. And I, I know you used to DJ with Momo. You guys had like used to do R and B oh, parties. We had, we had like five different nights together, probably for yeah, yeah. five or six years in New York. Yeah, yeah. He, he, I, and I used to. I remember coming to listen to you guys because I think you used to spin at the spot right across from PM, right? Yeah, you used, you yeah, used to the, throw down some dope R and B jams. I remember. I was like, yo, this dude. That was definitely my thing. I was an old soul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, I mean, we were talking like it was. It was almost like you couldn't recover after that SoundCloud thing that hit you. And it was, there was no options. And I remember Momo was telling me, like, he was like, yo, he was searching for other options and other sites and everything. There was nothing. It's like nothing. Yeah, it was, me, right? it was pretty devastating because it was basically, uh, you know, like I said, I was a race, but also, like, you lose the fans. Yeah. Because, like, it, you, you have them on SoundCloud and then you don't have any way to communicate mm-hmm. with them again, right? All of a sudden, your account is just gone. Right. And you can't even like send them a message to be like, follow me here. So, you know, if you got tens of thousands of people, what do you, maybe 10%, 20% will care enough. First of all, maybe that many will even notice that you're gone, right? Because mm-hmm. like people follow someone and then if you're not in their feed, whatever. I mean, how many of those people are going to come like find you on Twitter or find you wherever or find somewhere to listen to your music? So I think that it was, yeah, I mean, it was, it was pretty devastating, but like, 
I was getting older and things were slowing down <laughs> a little bit anyways. You yeah, know, yeah. like uh, Matthew McConaughey and Days and Confused, like uh, uh, I get older, they stay the same age. That's how I felt <laughs> yeah. about all the, all the people at the club. <laughs> I, know, I know the feeling, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like yo, these, these people are perpetually 21 years old and yeah. I'm out here like... 39 years old trying to try to like look cool and, and i just really want to be asleep yeah. so i mean i think you know i think i think the end was coming for me anyways and once i you know like my daughter's almost six once i had her like it just for me it was just it really crushed the whole like travel thing and stuff yes yeah. you got a beautiful yeah. family by the way i, I see Thank i see you. y'all on instagram i'm jealous i'm like yo these people Thank look you, look too happy right now <laughs> we got good fil- we got good good filters <laughs> <laughs> always got the nice light i said I, I i know scott's doing well because he ordered the biggest what are those the air castles what do you call those those jump room castles oh yeah we bounce it like yeah, yeah, the bouncy my, the, yeah. i call that shit the babysitter though <laughs> yeah. like, i just i just put one in the backyard and then my kids don't bother me so it's the best investment there is yeah but this one was yeah. like drake's house it was like huge it was like yeah i get like three story bounce houses yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there's three story bounce houses damn i i mean that high like taller than my house yeah you know, like, yeah, it was fucking yeah, nuts. Man. But yo, like your story on SoundCloud uh, reminded me of Nick Bike, uh, a young producer, yeah. and yeah, he's well, great. But I mean, it happened to him on Bandcamp, you know, and he got he got sunned out. But luckily, he was collecting emails along the way just in case something might happen. But I couldn't help but yeah. think about that with you. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. Yeah, it's 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 a bad look. Teaches you a lesson though about uh, you know, it's funny we talk like obviously I'm into crypto now and like the whole. There's the side of it that you talk about, which is like the speculation. Everybody just wants to get rich, right? So yeah. you buy shit because someone tells you it's going to go up and then you sell it and you're rich, right? Mm-hmm. But like at the core of it, it's really about decentralization and not having to rely on like these platforms or other authorities to tell you what you can and cannot do. Yeah. You yeah. know? And so like that was my first real experience where I was like, yo, they like SoundCloud not existing, like, it, it it destroys my entire career. I'm too dependent on SoundCloud, right. right? So from that day on, I was like, I'm never going to depend on a single platform. You know, like there was that huge Twitter hack uh, six or seven months ago, like, mm-hmm. you know, where like all of a sudden Elon Musk was tweeting out Bitcoin scams and stuff. Fake, you know, and like my account got removed on that. And I was off Twitter for three days. And I was like, damn, if I got removed from Twitter, like it would destroy what I'm doing now, you know, even after all that. And I have the email addresses and I have a YouTube and I have all that, but like, I'm still too reliant on Twitter, you Mm -hmm. know? I want to talk about crypto, but I really want to get into GameStop. So I want to, I want to talk about GameStop because it's like, it's like an investment revolution that's going on, right? Because we're finally seeing a bunch of regular people, right? Kind of like gaining interest all at once at one time and just kind of want to enter this investment world, right? Right. And uh, I want to talk about GameStop and, and what happened and exactly, you know, how the – it's a like classic like David and Goliath story, right? It's like a bunch of amateurs like whooping the ass of a bunch of franchise players, right? Yeah, but it's like – to me, it's like a bunch of amateurs whoop a bunch of franchise players and then the league comes in and swats down the amateurs yeah, and yeah. tells them they can't yeah, play. Right, right. Yeah. Right. So – like as fun as it is to act like it's this great David and Goliath story, I, I have a hard time believing that like regulators and hedge funds are going to let David win in the end. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So kind of like they might have won that little battle, but I don't see him winning the war. Um, sadly, you know, and at the end of the day, like anything, this happens in markets all the time, like not in the same way, but like something goes crazy. People get that FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. People start buying. Somebody always gets left holding the bag. And it's usually the little guy, you know what I'm saying? So like, and I've never seen anything like it where Robin Hood like straight up turned off the buy button and just let people sell, which means price can literally only go down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So anyone who was holding on Robin Hood, sell, 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 sell. And then they started like liquidating people, which means like they close your position for you. And, and usually you do that when you're borrowing money, but they were liquidating people who just like bought the stock. Like I, if you buy GameStop, you're like, I can hold this forever, right? It's an investment. I bought the stock. It's not how it works on Robinhood, apparently. They can just sell your stock at a loss and you lose your money and you have no recourse. So like, and wow. that happened. So like I was getting messages from people that, like, only $15,000 I had in the whole world. I just lost on GameStop because I finally logged in and then, and my stock was gone and I sold it at a loss. You know what I mean? And that, that, that shit is criminal. You yeah. know what I mean? And like, so it's fun to, like, you talk about the David and Goliath, but the little people are still the ones that really 
got messed up. I mean, they didn't let the, the hedge fund that was about to go out of business, they just stopped letting people buy so that the price would go down and they wouldn't go out of business. Mm -hmm. It's absurd. God so damn. can we can yeah, we go man. back a little bit and, and talk about what actually happened and, sure. and explain what Robin Hood is? Uh, sure. So like basically... I don't know, and correct me while I'm wrong. I'm just gonna no, kind of got give it. a short synopsis, and I want I want to actually I want to I want to public service announcement. Yeah, I want to <laughs> announce this publicly. All right, me, Neva, and Jamie are morons when it comes to this shit. Like we are absolute yeah. morons. We are idiots. So um, clueless. We're clueless, which might be good for a lot of people who won't admit it, but we will proudly admit that we are morons. Yeah, sure. So sure. um, the, the little bit of research that I've done in the five days, you know, is, is, is what you're going to see right now. Okay. Yeah, so, that is. <laughs> and should we be putting out a disclaimer? Because I noticed this disclaimer is on a not lot of financial things. advice. We're not, yeah, a, no, we're not financial advisors. I don't hear nobody saying that. Those dumb I don't think problems. anybody's confusing the three of y'all financial advisors. <laughs> we're not financial advisors. This is entertainment and all this shit. I see that in all the YouTube yeah. videos. But Crypto for dummies. Here right. we go. So basically, this is all about short sale right and long sale right and short sale yep. in layman's terms is basically uh when when motherfuckers bet against the stock and speculate Correct. that it's gonna go down so if i'm like yo gamestop they're gonna go down i'm gonna actually put money on them going down and if the the lower the stock goes the more money i make in actuality Correct. because right? you, when, when you're shorting it you're 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 basically you have the right to buy it cheaper if it goes down. So right. the gap between the price you shorted yeah. it at and where you buy it back is the profit. Mm -hmm. And then that's versus a long sale, which is the typical. A long is just I'm regular, buying it yeah. and I'm going to sell it when it goes. Buy, buy low, sell high. The right. old classic, classic investing for dummies. Right. Yeah. Although you can do it, it, it can be more complex than that, than that. But at the basic level, that's the case. Yeah. And then so Robinhood is an app that, re that actually allows um, any – basically anybody with a bank account and with any kind of money anywhere from ten dollars to twenty dollars to sure. make investments when before that was impossible they had to do it through a broker right is that that's right. correct and that, then, that's basically correct how long yeah. has robin hood been or am i wrong thinking that ashton kusher started robin hood or you know i i don't know but i, I mean i remember they've been around for a while yeah. but like they really blew up in the last year like uh, their, their popularity really came with dave portnoy you know barstool sports mm -hmm. davy day yes. trader yeah cool president like when he started like when COVID hit and he started day trading live on twitter that's when everybody signed up for right, right. robin hood and started following him so it, it's been around and it, it was actually a, a decent business but they were kind of already exposed almost a year ago when he started and then like march 23rd something like that is when the stock market really like capitulated like really dropped hard and robin yeah. was like offline for like two days because they mm -hmm. couldn't handle the the volume and the volatility so like people couldn't like couldn't go close their position before it went down like you know they didn't have access that's just par for the course in crypto by the way that's every single day like if, yeah. want, if, the, if it moves we are locked out and whatever but like that should not be happening um in the, in the stock market you know so they, they've had their problems this is not a first time offense right so basically with gamestop a hedge fund wanted to kind of expedite or speed up the process of like putting them out of business pretty much because their stock was going so low so they yeah. were trying to manipulate the stock market or the, I guess the price on it by shorting it, right? Aggressively. Is that well, what happened? I mean, kind of? sort of. So and, and like, then, and then listen, a, listen, yeah, bad, bad comp the stock price of a bad company should go down. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So like at the, at the, at the basic level, there's really nothing wrong with what they're doing. That's what hedge funds do. Mm -hmm. In fact, most hedge funds like try to remain kind of neutral to the market. So they have to be shorting a certain amount of stocks and longing a lot of stocks. So that's how they, that's why it's called a hedge fund. That's not what these dudes are actually doing, but in theory, they should be hedged. Like if you're long, you should have an equal position short hedging something else so that you're at net zero, but that's neither here or there. GameStop is a shitty company. Right. Right. It's like, it's like, like no, blockbuster, right? It's basically yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah basically like, it. right. So, so it's not like the stock should be going up. Right. But you know what I'm saying? But, so, but to be so honest, they, they were to, aggressively yeah. short, yeah, because they thought it was shitty, but also because like, yeah, they thought they could make a whole lot of money by continuing to push it down. But what happens, and this has been happening since the beginning of markets, it's called a short squeeze. In this case, it's a gamma squeeze, but that's kind of more complicated. But when there's a whole lot of shorts, a short is a sell order and it's borrowed, right? 
at the core, you understand you're saying you want to bet against it going, uh, you want to bet that it's going to go down, but you don't own the stock to sell. Mm -hmm. That's why a long is different. Like I can buy it, then I just sell it. It's mine. Right. But when you want to short something, you have to borrow it. Mm -hmm. Right. And that borrowing is with leverage or margin interest, however you want to put it. So like you have to have enough money in your account to cover it if it goes against you. That's mm -hmm. you've probably heard of a margin call or something like that. So basically what happens when something's heavily shorted and people want to make a whole lot of money, like if it's really heavily shorted, they buy it up. And once you buy, like, say it's at 10 bucks, if you can get it to like 20, then all those people who shorted it at like 12, 13, 14 start to get margin called. And so when they get liquidated, well, what happens when a short closes? It becomes a buy order, right? So they have to buy at higher prices and that sends it to the next person who's liquidated to the next person. And you get this cascade of shorts being forced to close with forces the price up at like an insane trajectory, like velocity. So that's what happened. They realized with well, the Redditors and you can look at their plan, they realized, hey man, this stock is shorted like there's more shorts than there are shares. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like it, the short interest in it is insane. AMC was another company they tried that with. They could see it. And like, if we can just get enough people, or at least this is the theory, who knows if there was some hedge fund behind all this, I don't know. But if we can buy enough, all these dudes are going to have to like start covering their shorts, which means buying and buying and buying. So like, if you see it go 10 to 20, but you know that if it goes to 30 and you're short, you can't afford it, you have to sell. I mean, you have to buy, right? You have to close your sale. So it just goes, and that's what we saw. It literally went like up 10, 20 times because people just had to buy to cover their shorts. Right. So basically Damn. all the, these hedge funds who, who were betting that the stock was going to go down, right? It, when they do a short sale like that, if the stock goes up, they lose they're money, right? Correct. Because if they're gambling yeah. it for, to go down, they lose money, but- the problem is, is that as the stock goes higher and higher, they're losing more and more and more. So, but, uh, right. And right. not only that, like if you buy a stock mm -hmm. and it goes down, you hold it, you just hold it till it goes back up. Exactly. Like you can hold it forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? In general, mm -hmm. you should be able to, but when you're short, you can't do that because you're borrowing it and they come and call. They want their, they want it back. Right. So that's so why that's, it's like that's much why, yeah. easier to do to shorts than it is to long. So once you get that cascade triggering, it just like you see this insane. You like if you trade Bitcoin, you see it all the time. Mm -hmm. Like you can just like one of the ways that people trade Bitcoin and crypto is literally just to watch the shorts and longs. And when one stacks too high, you just see price go the other yeah. way real quick. So basically, all these redditors were like, <laughs> "Fuck that!" You know, we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bring the game stock stock up, and they basically kept buying and buying. And the value increased, and increased, and these hedge funds were losing billions because it was unheard of that GameStop it went up like five hundred percent, right? Yeah, there's just, and there's like absolutely no reason for it. We saw right. it last year that they, they did the same thing with Hertz. Hertz went bankrupt, and then the stock went up five times, like right. kind of the same. Same that was Dave Portnoy, I think, pretty much driving that one. But yeah, man, they like they they did exactly what Wall Street does. The problem mm -hmm. is. Apparently that's not cool if you're not Wall Street, right? Mm -hmm. And so what happened? And we were you were talking about this that everyone pretty much did this to Robinhood, right? Because it was a bunch of redditors and regular regular people. They were doing it everywhere, but I think Robinhood was like the core platform where mm -hmm. this is happening. But then Robinhood couldn't fill those orders, so they had to shut mm -hmm. off. Right? They got scared, right? Pretty much, or was it? Yeah, right I mean, they, so so like it's so much more complicated, right, and right. I don't even even than I like. <laughs> understand and people are still getting the bottom of it so the first right. knee-jerk reaction of everybody was like robin hood's evil they like the, yeah. the 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 hedge funds called them and said shut down so we can mm -hmm. make our money whatever nah robin hood's just a shitty business mm -hmm. and robin hood like when they get an order i think it takes 48 hours for like that order to settle or clear so like that's why you don't really own the stock in robin hood they're they're taking all the orders together and they're selling it to someone bigger to mm. fill those orders. So if that person says, I'm not taking those orders, you can't fill an order on Robinhood. So Robinhood apparently, like literally, it was going to cost them like billions of dollars to right. fill all these orders. So they couldn't do it and they had to shut down. The problem is that they should have also shut down selling, not just buying. I've right. never seen that before. Right. So they were, they were basically like, it, it just looked really shady. And then when- It's, when, it's super shady. When the co-founder was on like CNN, or I forgot what show he was, he just- he just looked like an idiot, right? He, it, yeah, he had that word sat just vomiting <laughs> like catchphrases. Yeah. It, it reminded me yeah, of uh, like, it reminded me of Silicon Valley, the HBO show. Whenever they had that, 
Hey, when they had the CEO and he would just fuck shit up and he just would say the wrong yep. shit. It reminded that me exactly, exactly of what that. It was right. like. Yeah. Richard. Yeah, yeah Richard. Richard whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he just made it worse. And I think and but isn't this kind of like isn't this kind of proof that the stock market is just complete bullshit? Like it's just Yeah, not, it's totally rigged. It's it's just complete yeah. bullshit. It's if it's like if if we saw anything from last year or this er, and from 2020, it's like I used to. I, I mean, we were sold that the stock market is basically a thermometer for the economy, right? Kind of. Yes. Right. It, yeah, it, that's what they sell you. But the, then, why? Why are a bunch of people homeless and stocks never exactly. go down? It's like why? Why are? Why is the stock market thriving? Right. Why is Wall Street thriving? But like, I think they were saying, why is Main Street like suffering? So it doesn't yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Like why are why are airline stocks going up when, you know what I'm saying? Like almost airlines right. are almost out of business. Like what you know, it doesn't make any sense. So it's like you know, it, it's not the pulse of the economy. We can it's see not it the clearly. economy at all, and now it's, we're seeing it even more. Right. So it's like it's almost like the blinds are lifted completely, and we're seeing it for what it is right now. I I, I agree. I, I mean. You call it what you want. You can call it like the one percent, you know, all that. But it's it's corporate socialism. Yeah, you know, which is funny because like these month they'll get up there and rail about socialism and ba- and socialism is bad. I'm not saying that, but like the socialism and this and that. And then the same dudes will take a handout that they don't need from the government to like mm. pump the price of their stock, which is just like socialism. It just goes to the top instead of to the bottom. It's a bunch of free handouts. So what they happened is they said. Hey, we're just going to print as much money as we need to print. We will never stop printing. We will, it's called quantitative easing, and they just started buying everything, right? So they just pump money into the market, pump money. So there's a floor. No matter how much it drops, there's just money being printed to buy, buy, buy. So the price of the stock goes up, and that has nothing to do with the economy or what's happening with a normal person. Mm -hmm. And you know, you see these like stimulus packages, and someone gets $1,200. And you look at these like trillions of dollars are going to like buy Apple bonds, you know, and like twelve hundred dollars go into like the Af- a- average dude. And Apple has like tens of billions of dollars in cash and doesn't need any help. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So like it, none of it makes any sense. But they back, you know, they backstop the, the stock market. Stocks never go down. Right. Well, they do. They will. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that shit can't last forever. But it's an artificial. It's just completely artificial. And you see like. As the price of stocks goes up, if you watch the value of the dollar, you know, there's an index, DXY, dollar goes down. Like when the dollar goes down, everything else goes up. So they're kill- literally like printing away the value of the dollar. You know, like in a year, your dollar is not going to be worth as much for rent, for bread, for, for anything. You know what I mean? Like they're just the value of your dollar goes down. It's inflation, but they don't care because their stocks went up. So, damn. So I, my, my question is this. Uh, I have two questions actually. Is crypto the opposite of the stock market? Pretty much, is it the answer to the corruption in in the stock market? And if people are gonna invest and get into trading or whatever, should they be using Robinhood or should they be using other apps that you could, you would maybe suggest? I mean, I wouldn't touch Robinhood with you know like the old joke like I wouldn't hit it with his condom and his you know no. <laughs> So like, yeah, no, I wouldn't. This is the yeah. fun that we're waiting um, for. Yeah, yeah, like no, because like you just saw what happened. Yeah. Like if you if you if you literally if they can change your position while you're locked out of the app so right. that you lose all your money, no, nah, I wouldn't touch that. You know, okay. like I think that that listen, they all have their faults, I guess, but like E Trade, TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, like these, these things have been around for a million years. They're you know they're very stable. So I would look at a personally, I would look at a more sophisticated platform than Robinhood. As for crypto, it, it could be an answer to some of the problems, but it doesn't solve the problems of the stock market by any stretch. I mean, the crypto no. market is also extremely volatile. It's mm-hmm. all over the place. It's a hell of a lot of fun if you're trading it, but it takes a whole lot of stomach to watch your money go down 30% a day and up 25% a day and down 50% a day. You know, But at the end of the day, Bitcoin itself is like effectively the opposite of what I just described with dollars, right? Like your dollar currency, like once they removed it from the gold standard in the 1970s, they used to have to have enough gold in Fort Knox to print the dollar, right? Mm -hmm. Like you had to put gold in Fort Knox and you could print dollars based on the value of that. 
So there was always something behind it. Then they switched to a fiat based system, which is what basically everyone has. And that's just basically like what's backing it is your trust in your government that they're not going to like go under. And we've seen what happens in Venezuela and Iran and Lebanon right. and all these places where that shit fails and they just print and you need like two suitcases to go buy a bread. You know what I mean? Of money, like inflation. <laughs> yeah. That won't happen here because the dollar is the like reserve currency. But they can print dollars endlessly and they can remove the value of it and there's nothing you can do. So Bitcoin is the opposite. That's why people love it at the core. Forget all the like, I'm going to buy it. It's going to go up. The speculation, it's a hedge against that because Bitcoin has a fixed supply. There's only 21 million Bitcoin will ever be mined. Mm. And every four years, the amount that's added to the market is cut in half. It's called the halving. So it has a fixed supply that's reducing over time. So if demand is going up and supply is going down, the price goes up, right? Yep. But at the end of the day, you know exactly how much Bitcoin there will be. You know exactly where it's being held. It's very transparent. It's very obvious. So people who want a hedge like you, I don't know if you follow it, but like that company MicroStrategy, you know, there's the dude, Michael Saylor, and he was like, they've bought billions of dollars in Bitcoin with the company. Like instead of having cash, they're holding Bitcoin now. Hmm. You know, and his answer is like, my, my dollars are going down in value every year by six, 7%. So I need to hold something that's going to, you know, hedge right. against that. Mm -hmm. So I think to most people, it's a way to like opt out of that fixed system, mm -hmm. that broken system. It's not going to fix the stock market in any way, shape or form, but it's a way to say like, I'm not even doing that anymore. Right. Right. I'm going to like, I'm going to hold this. I'm going to, you know, trust that if I hold it long enough over time, the price will continue to go up because the supply will continue to go down. And like, I will have something of value if the system burns, you know, and that's how people always treated gold, right? Like people, they, you buy gold because it's a store of value. It's a hedge. Like you got your gold, no matter the government do whatever they want. I got my gold. But like, you can take a bar of gold into a grocery store and try to you know what I mean? Like buy, buy some, like shave it off. And you know, like you think they can't come and get your gold. So Bitcoin solves a lot of that. And that's why people are very passionate about it. I was, I was very confused about Bitcoin in the beginning because it, in the beginning, it seemed like something for the underworld. Like it seemed like something that was underhanded. It wasn't regulated. By drugs. Yeah. 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 It, it wasn't yeah. regulated because I. Like crack. It, <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't. The Carter volume, whatever. <laughs> It was like a way I've like motherfuckers used to tell me it was a way for them to wash their money in, in some sorts in, in a way. And it was it was it's is this is it regulated now? I, no, it's it it's, is. It's, so, yeah. So like like in two even before maybe before like 2017, but it was like the Wild West. It, well, yeah, that's what like I'm talking like, about. Yeah. Everyone was like, oh, we can trade this and we don't even need to pay taxes on it. Whatever. Right, that's not right. true. But that was the feeling. Now it's like the taxes in the United States on crypto are harsher than for anything. Else. Really? Oh, OK. Damn. I was going to yeah. ask that because, because yeah, it's terrible because there was a strip club that opened up here in like yeah. 2000. Was it 15 or 16? Um, I think it was 14 or 15, 14 or 15. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a strip club that opened in Las Vegas and they dealt with Bill Bitcoin. Yeah. So like during CES, you know, the, the tech convention that used to come here, all of these nerds and geeks and like millionaire, I don't know what they were in that strip club spent spending Bitcoin like crazy. You want to know what's wild about that? Just so that the, their wives wouldn't see it on their credit card bill. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to know what's wild about that though. Yeah, yeah. That 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 hundred dollar uh, five song lap dance is right. now worth forty thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Whoa. Most expensive, most expensive <laughs> lap dance in Damn. history. History. And he listen to my dumbass. They were like, "Hey, can we can we pay you in Bitcoin?" And I, and Someone I, offered me Bitcoin in like 2010 for a gig. I and was I was like, like I, "I take actual money." Yeah, that's what I said. I was like, "No, no, 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 fuck that!" Like, how do we even do that? What is it? How do I start? <laughs> how, do say, how much? How much did it offer you bitcoins? Five hundred. Five hundred bitcoins? No, no. And I was like, no, yeah, like five hundred dollars in bitcoin. But if that was like oh. for me in 2010, that would have been millions of dollars. Yeah. Now. And I was like, nah, my rate's like two thousand or whatever. And they're like five hundred. And I was just like, give me two thousand cash. Yeah. Right I, now. Real, yeah, yeah actual yeah, money. Yeah. I mean, that's what that was how I felt about it. <laughs> Wait, so you know? how much like, would I didn't, how much would a five hundred be right now if I just held on it? From what I, year? Uh, Two thousand fifteen. Like Fourteen or fifteen. Fourteen or fifteen. 
I mean, it was anywhere between like a hundred and a thousand dollars then, and it's like thirty six, thirty seven thousand dollars as oh, we're talking. Sure. So every, every thousand dollars would have been thirty seven now. So yeah, like you know, it's eighteen, nineteen grand, whatever. Wow, interesting, Damn, man. Crook. You'd have done well, <laughs> Good, man. You'd have done well, but but that also implies that you would have actually held it. That you would have actually not lost it. I would have. You know I, I mean, would, like I would have forgot you about forgot it. Forgot about it. You would have forgot <laughs> about it. Everyone did. So <laughs> that, that, into that, something. What, whoa. What's hilarious is that's another huge argument for Bitcoin, though. Right. So many people have forgotten about it, or like they lost that laptop, or they lost that thing that they think that out of that twenty-one million, five or six million are like lost forever. Really? So that even reduces the supply down to like sixteen or seventeen. So, no, that, so whatever gets lost cannot be like. Oh, now. that's the thing. It's you done. are your. You're your own bank. That it's scary, you know what I'm saying? And like hackers, so they they can't go in and just re, like re get it, like just recoup nah, if it. if you lose, if you lose, like you, you you are your bank, you know what I mean? And so listen, no, like, but Bitcoin now, now can't go find it. it for you. They, no. yeah, if they can find your private keys or Damn. whatever. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Man. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. So wait, explain how you got into it because I I I, I watched a couple of interviews with you and you said you've been doing investments since you were like. A teenager? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, like I started like, like I bought, bought like one share of Disney when I was like 13 and some Caterpillar because I thought tractors were cool or something, you know what I mean? But like I wasn't hardcore into it. But then, you know, I, I, I kept up with just kind of buying stock here and there. I went to University of Pennsylvania, you know, in the late 90s. And that yeah. was like during the real Wall Street boom. And everybody there was at work. I was in the like, I was like a music and anthropology major, but like all my friends were business majors at Wharton and stuff. So everybody was just talking about it, you know. So, but I was a shitty investor. I was a worse trader. Like every time I got some money, I'd spend it on some dumb stuff like a real DJ, you know. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I got money. I'm going on a trip. You know, and like cash out, right? And pay pay the taxes or whatever. But um, so yeah, I mean, I kind of like loosely got into it. Then I was always kind of trading on the side badly. But then I really got into crypto like late sixteen, early seventeen. After all that SoundCloud shit happened, like after I had a kid, and I was like, well, DJ, I can't, I can't do this forever. Um, and it would be like starting from scratch, anyways. But I came into it just like everyone else is kind of. You're talking about with Robin Hood now. I just was like, yo, people are making crazy money. Right. I didn't care what it was. I didn't know what it was. I just like it's people. Like, and it's there was like a bunch a, of DJs yeah. that got me into it. Yeah. It's like a modern day yeah. gold rush almost, right? Yeah. That's it's what it was like, right. especially then. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, but as I started to trade it and I did really, really well, I was lucky. You know, I was just happened to be there. Like 2017 was bananas. You so bought wait, something. It was like you woke up you, and it was up like. What was your initial investment? What did you start with? Like, I, I literally started with three grand in Bitcoin. Mm. Like I had like three thousand dollars of Bitcoin, and then I bought, took half of it, and bought Ripple and Ethereum, and and uh, and then I like woke up like three days later, and then my three grand was like twenty grand. Whoa! Woo. So, but that that was and, that's when it was like volatile, right? It was just like crazy. Oh, it was, it was, it was, it was like that was like that was probably when I did that was probably like. I remember February, March of 2017. You hear about this Doge coin that everybody's talking about now? No. I, yeah, that's yeah. the thing that like the little dog, like Elon Musk talks about it all the time. That's like the, and the GameStop dudes are kind of been pumping that too. Mm. Yeah. I rode that exact same coin in 2017, I, like 10 times my money. So like, then I was like, oh, I'm kind of like, I'm good now. I took out all the initial money and I like played with, you know, kind of the how y'all live in Vegas, play with the house's money. Right. Yes. You know, yeah. and uh, wrote it up, wrote it down, <laughs> wrote it up again, it wrote like it down. gambling, basically. But yeah, I mean, I started in this market basically with $3,000 and- Holy shit. Turned it into a lot. But but I have a question. If you didn't get that kind of a return so quickly, so instantaneously in three days, would you be so into it as you are now? Do you I don't know. know. It's, a really, it's a really good question because like- mm. Because wait, I, I just want to say- I've like I live in Vegas and I've never wanted to gamble because I've never really won. Do you know I never got that taste. So I feel like right. when you get that taste, it just it just changes everything. Yeah, you it know? got me addicted. Right. Yeah, yeah, I was def definitely. There's a lot like gambling that is with trading. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But um, the funny thing is, like they say, it's like an old saying about traders is really the worst thing that can happen to you when you start trading is to do really well really fast because mm, yeah. then you feel like you're a genius and you d you can't <laughs> right. hear otherwise that's like anything you, but that's anything exactly in life. like vegas right yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. anything like, in oh, life, i'm the right? greatest craps player of all time <laughs> yeah behind the head like you know i got all the techniques and yeah 
nah, man, you, the way you blow on the dice is not why you're winning. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, like, <laughs> but that's but that's anything in life too. Like, if if it comes fast, you don't appreciate it. You don't. You're know how natural. To sustain. Yeah, you don't yeah, know how yeah. to. You don't learn to sustain it. You don't know how to uh, recover from a loss. You know, and it's it's just one of those things where. But I I really think it's great that when you know when your whole world crumbled with SoundCloud, right? You you came to realization. You're like, wow, this DJing thing is is not going to cut it. And then you started going into crypto and 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 focusing on investing. I love how we can get pushed into a ditch, and at, when we're at we're lowest, we find a way to get out, and we're yeah. we're in a better situation. It's to the point where me myself. I, I look for that struggle sometimes and I know that's not the best thing to do to motivate me because I'm like, yo, I just need to get in a ditch so I can get that motivation again because I feel like if I get in a ditch, I'm going to get motivated again. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I was on cruise control DJing to some degree and yeah. everybody who's a DJ has been there. You get your couple residencies, your one or two things, you know, you can travel and it's like makes it hard to like aspire to something much greater. It's right. like you said, but if you Absolutely. lose two of those residencies one right. month and all of a sudden you're like, Oh, rent. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Or whatever you, all of a sudden you're like the dude out on fifth Avenue selling mixtapes, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and so it really does t take adversity. I think, I mean, to me, I got very lucky to some degree too. Like I was in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. Like I already had a Twitter following. So it, like having like, I guess when people like come to your Twitter account and see that you have followers, they follow you because you have followers. You know what I mean? Right. So I had like, I mean, I lost all the people that cared about my music, but like they at least provided a floor for like this new yeah. audience or whatever. Yeah. And yeah you got like a so hundred, like, a hundred thousand on Twitter right now. Almost like, 200,000. Almost 200,000. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, yeah, that's, that's gone nuts now just cause crypto is going nuts, you know? So yeah. like, and, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like, you know, it was funny in music. I, I got up to like 40 and mm -hmm. then like, when I started talking about crypto and not talking about music, it went down to like 20. <laughs> <laughs> oh, forget this guy. People are like, yo, where's the remix though? Um, and, uh, you know, and then it kind of built up from there. But yeah, I think that that's true. And for me, like, uh, I held, uh, to some degree, I felt like I was already like holding on to DJing for too long. Mm -hmm. Like, I wasn't making as much money. Like, I wasn't, as like in demand, you know how it goes. It's like in waves. Like I was kind of, I felt old. I didn't have the passion for it. Like, you know how it is. I mean, you more than anyone, like in Vegas, like there's the gigs you want to play and there's the gigs you have to play. And right. it started to feel like mm -hmm. it was all gigs I had to play. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, I, I was always the type of dude who like, I would much rather play like a dingy basement for 30 friends and play what I want than right. like <laughs> being a big ass club playing garbage and like wanting to, you know, people, jump. Yeah, yeah. Pop <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like having the, the girls with the phone in your face and the requests and, you know, like, so, My birthday. um, <laughs> I, I definitely like I think I lost the passion for it anyway so it gave me an excuse to some to some degree like I respect you anyone who can like you guys keep doing this and love it and it keeps going I just oh, I've been doing it for like 20 years no, do, got, do, do you miss tired. it right do you miss it a little oh I miss it yeah. oh like oh yeah I miss Look, it said, like I, said, I know I'm like yo this <laughs> <laughs> you said, I right there. I'm like yo this, I'm, is, I miss this is the most DJ background I've ever seen <laughs> yeah in my I've life. seen <laughs> Hey man, I try it's to, like sports never know. and a DJing. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, yeah. But um, like I, it, I, I think I'll come back to it, like for the passion yeah. at some point. You know, yeah. like whatever. It's just, but like I don't. You know, like at the end, like I was playing these crazy gigs. You know, like I was like I was out with like uh, uh with Enrique Iglesias in South America, mm -hmm. like just wow. playing literally like opening crazy. stadiums wow. and shit, like. But like no, that wasn't even that fun. Like as crazy really? as it sounds, like really? I still I, I would have I'd much rather like have been in that basement where I was playing your joints in right. East Village than <laughs> right. um, the up there. Yeah. I don't know. Because then it was like up there playing a bunch of EDM I don't like because that's what they needed to hear and whatever. And that's you know, that shit's robotic anyway. It's not like it's hard. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, like, I don't, my, that's not I, going to that. talk. I could have <laughs> I could have, I could have, I could have taught my, I could have taught my, my, like my mom to go play those games, you know, like <laughs> could have just record it in advance and teach her how to, That's crazy. Just, but you know, and so like, I miss, I miss like this, the sweaty, like house party vibe. Right. Definitely oh, like I miss playing, that. but I don't, I don't miss like, I don't want to play. I don't want to go play a festival or anything like that's not my, you know, yeah, yeah. I don't know, I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but you you DJ off and on, right? Before the pandemic, you were DJing off and on. Yeah, right? until 
I mean, I haven't, I have not, the last gig I played was my mother-in-law's 70th birthday party about wow. a year and a half ago. Big, and before big that, flex. it had been over. <laughs> before that, it, Those are the house that, parties that he misses. Playing, playing country line dances. Um, and then like a year and a half before that was probably the last time I gig. It's wow. been, really been like three, wow, three wow. years since I properly went and like played something somewhere. Wow. So that means the crypto business and investments are good. Boom. They're good right now, right? Very, very good. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I have a question for you, uh, um, Scott. Do you, how do you feel about everybody just rushing into this right now? Mm. Like now, it's a trendy I, I thing gonna, to do. I think they're going to lose a lot of money. Really? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Like I mean, at the end of the day, like nothing ever changes with investing. Doesn't matter what you're investing in. Doesn't matter if it's the future. Doesn't matter what it is. Like nobody beats the market. Mm. You know, like you, you pay a wealth manager, they won't beat the market. You know what I, I mean? Listen, like the stock market goes up over time. Like if, if you look at it, like it's just like this with peaks and valleys, you know, but those valleys are like, you should be buying, not selling. And everybody else is selling because they're in panic. But like mm. the best way to invest in anything, and this is not financial advice, just a fact, is to just dollar cost average. Like if you say, listen, I want to like buy five grand worth of Bitcoin, buy 500 a week for 10 weeks. Mm. On a Monday, no matter what the price is, and don't even think about it, and then check that shit in three years. Right. You know, like the way, like, the, I mean, I think it's Buffett that said, but, um, you know, the markets are a mechanism for transferring wealth from the in, impatient to the patient. Yeah. Right. So people who try to, like, beat it, who try to trade, like, 95% of traders don't beat the market. Like, they could have literally just, like, bought an index fund and saved all their time and just invested. And mm -hmm. the way to make money, nobody wants to hear it. But it's to like save money as early as you can and then don't touch it. Right. It yeah. grow, well, you know, and it's just, it's just really boring to hear that. But like, that's the reality. So I think that most people are going to come in and think, like I said, think I'm a genius. Ah, I know every, something everybody else doesn't know. And they're just going to lose their money probably. I come from a background of like reselling sneakers and stuff. And yeah. we're in a group chat. So we always talk about what's the next hot thing, this, that, and third. In the last year or so since the pandemic, sneakers kind of have gone down. So that whole group chat became into stockbrokers and they stock all this and this, that, and the third. So they've just been investing all their money from their sneaker liquidation that they had did in the last year into stocks. But I'm like, yo, like half of us don't know shit about shit. And I don't know if that's the brightest idea. And I keep telling them, I'm like, uh, they one of them was all in Robin Hood and he just got asked out. Mm, and yeah. then the other one grabbed all his money and bought a bunch of Satoshi, which I don't well, know what that is. Well, the, the like a Bitcoin, like the if if Bitcoin was the dollar, the pennies are the Satoshis. Okay. So he bought yeah. a bunch of pennies in this yeah, case. Yeah, but yeah. I'm like, dude, you guys got to get some like real resources and like somebody that kind of guides you with it. Because it just sounds like they're just putting all their money in one basket and hopefully it grows into a bigger pot, you know? Yeah, I mean, you got to be a little bit diversified if you have money. But like all those things are catchphrases for rich people, right? Like, yeah. if you're just trying to pay your rent, you got an extra thousand bucks, you don't care about being diversified. You want to put it in something that might make you a hundred thousand bucks, not mm -hmm. something that make you one thousand and ten dollars next year and then one thousand and twelve dollars the next year and slow interest, you know. But like at the end of the day, like the wealthiest people in the world are the ones who just like sat on a pile of money somewhere that earned interest. Problem is you can't earn interest anymore on dollars. Like when we were kids, like a savings account, you put it in a bank and you made like eight or nine or 10% or something right. like a year. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. you're, it's, it's if less you're than doing that, your money, if, if you're doing 10%, your money doubles every seven years. Mm -hmm. So in 14 years, it's quite, you know what I mean? And like, so that's how people got rich, but now you don't have those opportunities anymore. In fact, not only are you not like getting interest, your money's losing value. I mean, so it's, like less, it's less than 1% interest on a lot of savings accounts right now yeah like fractional of a percent yeah, yeah the point oh one percent interest it's, it's crazy it's really so low how are you supposed to like so people can't like millennials got so fucked man mm -hmm. born into an era where like you can't like you just can't save money like you got to buy something with it that's why people like love bitcoin or like gold or silver art like whatever it is stocks everything like land you know what i mean you just have to buy something that has a chance to go up because your dollar you cannot save dollars anymore so mm. they're literally losing value. I have a qu I have a question. So let's say someone, you know, it's it's inevitable. I feel like everyone wants to get something on the, you know, on the stock. They want to get something. They want to get some type of stocks right now. If they were going to get stocks, what would you suggest they do? Like just do a long sale, buy buy low, and then just like you know hold on to it and sit on it. Pretty much something stable, right? 
I would say I would say invest money you don't need to touch anytime soon. Right. So like if you need to take it out for rent, shouldn't be in the stock market. You know right. what I mean? If like conventional wisdom says first you like get to where you're not in debt, right? And that like a mortgage is something different. But I'm saying like you don't want to be like you're not investing before you pay off your credit card. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you're paying like 20% interest on that. So first of all, get out of all your like debt. Then save enough cash where like if your shit really got bad and COVID proved this for like three or four months that you have like enough cash to like bare bones, like pay the rent, eat ramen, you know, whatever. Right. Like then after that you start investing. So you shouldn't even be investing until like you have a bit of a safety net, uh, I think of money to like support your life so that you don't have to sell off those investments at a loss when you're like in a panic, you know what I'm saying? Cause that's what happens. That happened to me when I was younger. Um, after that, I would say, listen, I, I actually had on my podcast yesterday, it hasn't come out, this dude, Jim O'Shaughnessy, and he's like Warren Buffett level, like famous, you know, baby boomer investment advisor. And I asked him that question. I said, the first question in the interview, I said, if you were a millennial right now and someone handed you a million dollars, where would you invest it? Mm. He was like, yeah, that's a hard question. Right. And he said, I would buy like uh, index funds, like that tracks like all the world markets, like a world ETF. Like I personally, like my retirement fund, my IRA, like I buy what's called SPY, which tracks the SPX, like the uh, S&P index. Because I figure like I, I'm, I'm investing this for 40 years from now. Well, now it's less. I'm 44. It's 20 years from now. Damn. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and so like I don't care if it goes down next week, you know, and like um, – so I would say like you, t- if you're starting, you just buy something that like tracks the market because the market really has never, it might even go down for like five years. Great depression went down for 10 years, not even, but like who got really rich in the great depression? The people who bought right. during the great depression, not the people who sold. If you had some cash, the richest people I know, like in my life are people who like in 2008, when the market crashed, mm-hmm. like bought all the real estate in Miami right. when it was like down 75%. You know what I mean? So like as much as like your human instinct when shit goes bad is to like sell, sell, sell and get out of it. Yeah. That's actually when you're supposed to be rationally buying. Right. Like uh, I talked to this guy, Peter Brandt, he's like a famous old trader. And he said, I asked him a similar question. He said, I tell my kids buy a company you like that you think is good and then hope that it goes down 50% so you can buy some more. You know, like, and you're, you want it, your, your, your instinct is like, I want it to go up because I want to look at my balance and see it going up. But in reality, if you're like dollar cost averaging, as I said, you want it to go down because you're not selling anytime soon anyways, you know, so you want to get it cheaper and then watch it go up. So I would say like buy spy or buy some like index fund that tracks and, and just chill, like put it on an auto buy, buy a couple hundred dollars of it every month, a couple hundred dollars every year, if that's what you can afford, you know what I mean? And that's not financial advice. That's just what financial advisor have told me, you right. know, I would say like, if you had 10 grand, maybe, maybe you put two or three grand in Bitcoin and the rest in the stock market or whatever, you know what I mean? Like diversify it a little bit. But, and, and what's, know, what's super know. stable. I've always been told is, is two things like a Roth IRA, right? Everyone says yeah. that. Like, so if you have, you know, a couple thousand a year, better, to, better to put it in a Roth IRA, right? Cause it that's just- correct. So you can, you can invest up to $6,000 in a Roth IRA every mm-hmm. year. Like yeah. that, that's the cap. Um, but what's confusing and confuse a lot of people and confuse me initially is what you just right. said. You don't buy a Roth IRA. A Roth IRA is a vehicle that allows you to buy other things without taxes. So you put your $6,000 in the Roth IRA. That's just cash in a bank account. It's not growing. Mm. You still need to make an investment inside your Roth IRA. The difference is that it, the taxes on it are deferred. Right. Like you don't pay any taxes on the gains in there until you retire. So like you don't have to pay any taxes until you're 65 years old when you take that money out. So it's that that's why it's a huge advantage. It's the tax advantage that uh, is a reason you buy those, but you still need to decide what you're going to buy inside the Roth IRA. Mm-hmm. Same as a 401k. Like, you know, people get a 401k, but usually their company invested in some basic fund. But what most people do is they get a Roth IRA and then they buy like a mutual fund or something like that. And you just let it grow, you know, buy the, you know, if it's, it's $500 a month, you could put into your IRA, right? 6,000 a year. And then you just automatically buy the same kind of boring vanilla thing every, and in in 40 years, that thing is up four times, you know? And then, and then, so the Roth IRA, I heard like you hold on to that for decades, right? 
you so sit saying, on yeah, it. You if, don't touch if it. If you take any profit out of it before you retire, before 65, you actually pay a tax penalty. Right. So, so if you're putting money in a Roth IRA, it really has to be money you are not trying to touch for mm-hmm. decades. Long term. Yeah. yeah. And then I heard the second good investment is like a good life insurance, pretty much, right? Is that right or wrong? Because my mom, my mom had me put into a life insurance plan when I was like 20. And I was like, why are you making me do this? And it was like $98 a month. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. And I, in, in the back of my head, I was like, She's like, oh, yeah, I'm the benefactor. So I'm like, is she trying to, like, make money off she of me if I die? <laughs> she you know? years, she's going to go rich. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes. but that's what yeah, I was I'm thinking, chipsy. you know, at 20. I'm like, yo, you trying to bank off of me, like, when I die? Like, what, what the fuck? But then I was just like, right. but I, I realized later, you know, it's a, it was for 150000 right? So basically, you know, if I wanted to take a loan on that right now for $20,000, I could. And the interest would be almost nothing. But right. when I get older, when I'm like 60 and I, maybe I have an operation that I can't afford, I can take money out of that life insurance plan as well and pay for it. And it yeah. opens it up. Or, you know. Life insurance is weird, right? Certain right. people probably need it. Certain people probably don't. If you're a single dude, you don't really need life insurance because what do you give a shit if you die? Right. What are you paying for? Mm-hmm. Right. Wow. But like, so, but, but in your case, yes. But so here's the thing. There's, there's different kinds of life at church. There's term life, Mm -hmm. which is like, where basically you, you know, say I have, if I die before I'm 55, it's set to an age usually uh, like then it pays out a million dollars to someone. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's a fixed fee every, every month, but that fee doesn't go up. So the younger you lock it in, the lower the rate is because you're healthier and right, but you're paying it for longer. But like, that's why people like say get life insurance maybe when you're younger, because it'll be 50 bucks a month instead of a hundred bucks a month. If mm-hmm. you go to the hospital and they find out you're some sick, you're then nobody's giving you life insurance for as cheap. Right? right. And then there's a whole life insurance, which is more complicated, probably what you're talking about, which is like they invest, you're basically investing in a life insurance company. You can draw money out of it and put money into it and mm-hmm. it grows a couple percent each year. But like, so life insurance, in my opinion, is really for people who like want to make sure their family is taken care of. Right. Like if I die, I want to know that my wife will get money and my kids will be good. So it's not, I think it's more for like family people. And my, I have it on myself and my wife. If she, she works, man, if she, like if something happened to her, I, you know, the money comes to me. And like, and the hope, because you know that life insurance gets more expensive as you get older. The hope is that like by the time you're 65 and you no longer have life insurance, cause like you, you, you know, you'll be the unlucky dude who dies when you're like 65 and three days and your life insurance expired, like that you've been paying for for 40 years, you know, <laughs> but you yeah. hope that like you've made enough money at that point where like your family is good and you don't need life insurance. Cause you can't really like, if you buy life insurance when you're 65, it'll be like hundreds of dollars a month or more, right. you know, because like, insurance companies aren't stupid. They know you're about to die. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't want to like pay out a big ass thing. So like, that's why they get you in when you're young, it's cheaper and whatever. But I, I mean, for the average person who's just like starting to invest yeah. life insurance is so far down the line. I think, well, I think it was kind things. of one of those things that my mom saw as like a retirement plan almost, because if you, right. see, if you hit a certain age, you know, the, I guess when you hit yeah, a certain whole age, life. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I think after after like seventy or sixty five, you can pull money from it to live off of, and and right. uh, and I think it's it's the the taxing on it is much less. You know, if if it yeah, was from yeah, I, I'm not like an insurance expert, but yeah, that yeah. sounds like a whole a whole life plan, which is like what I said. So like, right. yeah, you're paying ninety eight a month, but it's being invested, so you're getting a return on it. Mm-hmm. Mine is like I might have a million dollar plan. Yours only pays out one fifty. Mine pays out a million, and it's only like fifty a month, but like. I can never draw money from it. Once it's right. gone, it's gone. Either I die or I don't, mm-hmm. the money's gone. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So, and that that's term life. So yeah, yours is like, it's an investment vehicle. Insurance companies are basically just huge investment companies yeah. that act like they're insurance companies. Right, right. <laughs> so, so basically if, if someone had to choose, right, between the stock market and crypto, you would suggest crypto, right? If, I would suggest, if, Mick, I, was, I, would, I would say both. Both. A little bit of yeah. both. Yeah, I just don't think it like, uh, man, I, I'm way overexposed to crypto. I love it. I believe in it. I'm passionate about it. But, you know, 
there's a lot of things in my life I believed in and thought would be the future that were <laughs> stupid, like, like, like laser discs and Betamax. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, I thought mini discs were the future. I could record on them before you could record on <laughs> no, CDs. Right? Yeah. I put that in my car. Yeah, and mini right. discs were so, like, the, mini discs were the shit though. You could like edit oh, on that shit. You know what I'm saying you, you could record back, and yeah. like, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was that was still dope. But yeah, I mean, going back to the the crypto and stock market. So my question is this: You're so close to it, right? And I feel like there's two emotions when you're dealing with investments, like crypto and the stock market. There's like fear and greed, and you have That's to it. find like a medium between both because it's either like holy shit, I'm making a lot of money, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do more. Or it's, holy shit, I'm losing all my money, I got to sell. And you, in some cases, when you're, when you're most fearful and you, when you lose the most money, you just got to sit it out and hold on to the stock. That, that's what I was saying. You should yeah. be buying, not selling. Right. Human, human, emotion says, human emotion says, it's going up, I need mm-hmm. more. Right. And, but, right? And, and the other flip side of that is it's going down, I got to get out. The reality is you want to be selling when it's going up, not buying. Mm-hmm. And you want to be buying when it's going down, not selling, if right. you believe that the price will be higher 20 years from now, mm. right? So people get real impatient, they get impetuous, and they let those emotions take over. Like, yeah, there was a time when, like, we used to joke, like, trading is, like, every time I feel like I need to sell something, I'm just going to do the opposite. Literally buy the exact thing I think about selling. <laughs> it will work. You know what I mean? Because, like... <laughs> When you finally sell, man, that's the dead bottom. Like when you sell out of fear, price goes right the other way, right when you're done. It mm-hmm. always happens. It's the way that, you know, it's the way that uh, humans work. But you're right. I mean, fear and greed drive the entire market. Mm-hmm. I have a but question that's why, like, you don't buy GameStop when it's at $300 and you've seen it going crazy because you're feeling greedy. But it's, it's, but the, the, the funny thing is, it's like it's too late to get into it right now. Like, right? Like if crypto? Well, I I, no, I'm so. saying like when yeah. a stock goes yeah. up or when a crypto oh, yeah. goes up. GameStop. It's like everyone wants to hop on, and by, by that time, it's too late. It's like, you yeah, and there's a thousand things to buy. Right. You know what I mean? Like, listen, you could just like, my, my retirement plan for the last like 10 years, even before crypto, was like, I'm buying Amazon stock and like a market index. And I just buy Amazon stock, like whenever I can. You know what I mean? Like, whenever I, and uh, that worked. I believe Amazon takes over the world. You know what I mean? So I want to buy that. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's I'm not a- complicated. I have a question for you, Scott. What's the biggest loss you had in the game and what's your biggest win? Oh my God. Like, so in like 2012, I put basically everything I had into this like pharmaceutical stock. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was on the NASDAQ. It was like six bucks a stock. It wasn't that much money in retrospect, but for me, it was like everything and it literally went to zero. Oh, shit. Like they took it off the stock exchange and I never sold it. So I wrote it down to zero. I lost everything. I didn't make another trade or investment for like four or five years. Damn. Wow. But like in relative terms in crypto, like it's not strange to like put money into something and make 30, 40, 50, 100 times your money in a short period of time. Like yeah. I won't get into like details of whatever. In this world, you don't talk about numbers because no, no, I was just saying hack like hack you. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I was someone's just always trying to hack me because I'm like a public figure in this space. Like I get wow. sim swapped, I get dude, I mean, all the time. Like, you know. That's well, the I was thing talking about like stock about. And, like a, a specific stock that you won on. It was, was oh well, I'm the one that I lost on was called Eric's A R Y X. What was that like? And a, what, what, why did you buy into that? Did they have like some new drug? Oh, because like out? a friend knew a dude who was at the place, <laughs> and they were going to get the thing, and that the dude's homie was like right. the consultant, and oh, you know no. the, the the usual story. Like I thought that I had some kind of special information. They were going to get FDA approval on this like blood clotting drug and something, and all that. And then like the CEO came into like a call and was like, uh, we might be running out of money. And <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Wow. Man, man. So, so yeah, I lost everything, you know, and then Whatever. you probably, and then, uh, Jimmy was asking your biggest or your biggest probably, one probably be like Amazon, right? Like just a good, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's so, so Tesla, like I was buying, wow. like oh, I, I was buying Tesla real early and like 30, I bought Tesla the first time at like $36. <laughs> uh, then I sold it at like $360. So that was 10 times. And then it went down and I bought it for like $180 again. And then it went up and I sold it between like from, I started selling at like 500 and stopped almost at like a thousand, but then it went to like two or 3000 and then it split. And is now, even after like they split, like you got, you know, I don't remember three shares for every one or whatever it was, it was more. 
And now it's like even above after the split, it's even above the prices where I was selling it at. Wow. But yeah, but I mean, I made, you know, I made my money on it, but Amazon, Tesla, those, I was in them kind of early and like Tesla, I sat on it for years. You know what I mean? Like one of my buddies just bought in November, I think he bought at 400 or something like that. And now it's like 800. So he's like, yo, I wish I could have like just invested more, but I was too broke at the time. So I'm like, damn, that's fucking, I hate that feeling. I fucking hate that feeling. He missed out. I like when you sold it at five hundred and you saw it go to the thousands. D- didn't you have that feeling like fuck? No, I did, I did, but I've learned. You know, like really? I've been through it so many times. Well, because I've experienced the other side too. You know, so like my rational mind, I've had times where I sold something that I wanted to hold on to it, and I sold it, and it went way down. I was like, oh, thank God, I sold. So like, there's a balance, and and honestly, like I do this all the time. You know what I mean? So I kind of have become a robot about it after a long time. But like there comes a time where you're just like happy you didn't lose money. Right, right. It's like I made something. I'm happy. You know, like like I made my made my check, you know, and and it's good. And really like you can't control what happens after you make a decision. It's like everything in life. Like you if you (laughs) you get older and you come to a point where like own your decisions. You know what I mean? Like I decided to do that. We're good. I know exactly what can happen after I make that decision and I'm going to accept it, you know, and half the time it's good. Half the time it's bad. You're never going to sell the dead top and you're never going to buy the dead bottom. Oh man, I I would, like, that would fuck up my whole year. Yeah, I would just not, <laughs> every, oh, dude, if that everything would remind me of that shit, I'd just be like, "Oh motherfucker!" <laughs> you like, bring you know, it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a really common feeling, but like, yeah. eventually, if you do it enough, I think you kind of. I mean, yeah, I could have. I mean, I could have made five, six, seven more times on that Jesus. my money. Yeah, but yeah, man, could have got a six story uh, bounce. Six story bouncy house. Bouncy house. <laughs> <laughs> I did just buy. I did just buy a Tesla though. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank I have you. a question. Another question. Um, if I would buy Bitcoin right now, a hundred dollars of Bitcoin, and your prediction, how much you think it might be at the end of the year? Could be. I mean, I'm like really, you know, if you if you a bet if you have a bias against something, you say you're bearish. If you say you have a bias for something, you say you're bullish. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm real bullish. Like, and I have been. And I was screaming last March when Bitcoin was $3,800, like to everyone who would listen to buy it. You know what I mean? And everyone was mm. saying they were selling it and it was going to die. And now it's 10 times that much. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. yeah, the market last year, like in February, right? It was like a yeah, historic. March 12th was the dead bottom. But yeah, February started it and that was the bottom, you know, and everyone was screaming sell. And uh, you know, I was saying maybe buy some Bitcoin. But yeah. So like, if you look, you think about that, that was 10 months ago, right? Mm-hmm. Bitcoin went up 10 times since then, right? So like the price now is 37,000 or 36,000, whatever it is, 34, I don't know at this exact moment. Mm -hmm. If it went 10 times from here, because you don't think about the number, you think about the percentage, right? Because it's the same relative, you'd have $380,000 Bitcoin just to do the same thing that it did last year, which was crazy. Don't get me wrong. Like I don't expect that, but so like conservatively, like I personally think it'll, it could be six figures by the end of the year. I also think it could go down 50%. I don't fucking like they could pass some regulation and be dicks and try to make it really difficult. And you know, like you can't you still have to deal with the government and the regulators and the sec and stuff and who knows what they'll do. But like, I believe if you bought a hundred dollars in Bitcoin that you could, it could be worth 300 by the end of the year. Nice. Is it a bad thing if a lot of people hop into the market? Like, is it, it is it not this time? market? No, <laughs> not right now. Like, so I, I think uh, it can be bad with certain things. But like I said, with Bitcoin, there's there's always less supply. Mm-hmm. So more people buying, they're buying something that there's less of right. that generally drives, you know, just the, the value goes like up. economics yeah. 101 supply and demand. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And what we're seeing now is like, in like 2017, when Bitcoin went nuts, you know, like it was crazy. It went up to yeah, 20,000 yeah, yeah. and then crashed. Yeah. Like that was all just like dudes like us. Like we were just buying it because we were going to get rich and whatever. The same thing you're seeing with GameStop. So of course, like the people who had a lot of it saw the price go up and were like, I'm making, I'm taking out, I'm out. I'm going to wreck all these dudes. Right. You know what I mean? And so yeah. the price went way down. This time it's like, you know, Wall Street and institutions and huge money that's buying it. And you can see it like... They buy it on an exchange and then you can, because, you know, blockchain, Bitcoin is very transparent. You can see, you see when it moves, there's no mm-hmm. hiding it, right? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like, it's a public ledger. So like they'll buy like a hundred million dollars worth of Bitcoin on Coinbase and then you see it leave the exchange, right? And it goes into like someone's hardware wallet or custody, whatever. So, you know, that's like, if it's not on an exchange, they're not selling it. 
Mm-hmm. So like you're seeing these huge buys, it's happening all the time now, these huge buys. And then it's like leaving the market basically and being locked up. That's just less supply, mm-hmm. you know? And like those dudes don't buy a couple hundred million dollars to pay like short-term capital gains and sell it next month. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like they're holding it for a long time. They're viewing it as a hedge. So I really do think it's different this time. I think that there's huge people buying it and they, they have no intention of selling it anytime soon. Right. So I think for me, that means that like, unless something crazy happens, we should see price continue up. So uh, what, what apps or what, what should people use to buy Bitcoin and, and stocks? Or to, to I use, uh, I, for, for Bitcoin, I use an app called Voyager. Voyager? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's investvoyager.com. Um, and what I love about their app, um, so A, it's really simple. Like a lot of people use Coinbase. I think Coinbase is trash. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, they have Cash high app? fees. Yeah, Cash App, PayPal, you can buy Bitcoin on all of those. But like, you know, like if you buy it on PayPal, you can't move it. Like they, they kind of say it's not really your Bitcoin. You're just investing on it and you have to hold it there. But like Voyager, um, you know, what's amazing about it is you can trade. So like you can buy Bitcoin, you can set your like weekly buys, whatever, and you can do all that. You can buy it whenever you want, but you also earn interest on what you hold there. So like, um, which you can't do in a bank account, right? Mm-hmm. And that's a new thing in crypto, being able to get yield. You might've heard of like DeFi, people talking about that a lot. That's like a huge catchphrase in there. But like you earn basically 6% on your Bitcoin while you hold it. So like every month and it compounds monthly. So like you get 6% interest on your Bitcoin and you can hold dollars there. But what you do is you swap the dollar for what's called USDC, which is basically a digitized dollar. I know it sounds kind of nuts, but yeah, yeah. it's like the dollar was when it had the gold standard. Like they put a dollar in the bank for every one of these coins. Mm-hmm. And it's like in New York and the, the government regulated and everything. And you can earn not up to nine and a half percent interest on that. So you can just like literally if you have dollars in a bank account, just take those dollars, put it on Voyager and buy USDC with it and you earn 9%, like minimum eight and a half, maximum nine and a half percent every single month. Like it's over a year, but it compounds. They like they pay it out on the first of the month. So it compounds even faster. So if, it's crazy. If I wanted to just put like, I don't know, like $5,000 on a Bitcoin. I would go on like Voyager app and say like, I'm buying 500 a week for 10 weeks or 500 a week for 10 months, depending on what you're like, how fast you want to get it in there and just let it do it. You and can would, set it as an automatic buy. And would you just focus on one pretty much or just like one or At two? At that point, yeah. I would just like, dude, once you get beyond Bitcoin and maybe Ethereum, it becomes still the wild west again. I love it. It's fun, but I'm like in it every day. Like if you don't right, understand right. it and you don't know what you're buying, Mm-hmm. Like if you're buying GameStop at three hundred dollars, because you think all of a sudden like used video games are worth three hundred, like no, you know what I mean. So like <laughs> it doesn't make sense, oh, right? So is so there the, like a minimum you could put on, put on to invest? Or? It you the, you can buy ten dollars worth of Bitcoin. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's yeah. So like and that, that's how like listen. So there's another like another incredible way. There's a company called. Do you know what Acorns is? Yeah, that's the like, that's the Ashley Kutcher one. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay, Acorns yes, is yes, like yes. it rounds up your uh, like if you your you're dollar. like Acorns is not crypto. It's like for stock, whatever. But you like attach your credit card, and like if you spend ninety eight cents on something, it rounds it up and invests two cents for you. So it rounds every transaction up to a dollar and invests it really, really slowly in really small amounts. But it grows really fast. Like Acorn growing into a tree. Obviously, why they named it that. There's a company that I work with in crypto called Roundly X R O U N D L Y X, and it does that exact same thing. Just and you can choose what it buys, but you just buy Bitcoin with it. So like every day, and it connects to Voyager. So it like it it does it on your exchange. They, around the X is just like the middleman. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. and so like every day, I just like get things like you bought seven dollars worth of Bitcoin, you bought twelve dollars worth of Bitcoin, whatever. And it and you never think about it because it's like you literally yeah. spent ninety seven cents and it put three cents in. Right. Yeah. That's a you great. Way. So you that's never a, miss the money. That's a great way to invest, though, kind of because it's just you're not thinking about it. And yeah, yeah. I do acorns too. It. And no matter how much money I have, I keep that all that just running in the background because you don't even think about it. It's right. passive, you know, like right. totally passive investing. You told, you said fear and greed, it eliminates all that. You right. don't even think about it. That's Damn. a great, that's a great uh, a term you just use passive, right? Passive, uh, passive money investment. Yeah, passive that's the way you want to invest money. If you're active, then you're you're putting yourself in the equation, right? That's yeah. usually bad. It's so it, I'm I feel so stupid because my whole life, you know, people have been showing me passive money, and I'm just been like, no, no, I can work for it. I want to work. I want to do this. I want to grind it. 
and like now that I'm getting older, I'm like, fuck, I, I want to start putting into like, I want some passive in- investments, right? Where, you know, shit is making money without any type of work working. or anything. It's just, it's just building on its own. So I think well, that, I mean, you're, you're at the store and shit. I mean, it's yeah. not like you were never trying to do stuff besides like show I mean, up to a DJ gig. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah, the store killed me though. That was not, that yeah, was not passive at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you call it? No, but so Acorn and then what was the other one you, you said? Voyager. It's called Round, Round the X. Oh, Round and, the and Round the X I use with, you can connect it to a number of different exchanges, but I use Round the X with Voyager. And like I said, man, like, I've been doing that on there for two years and like I switched, you know, I was buying Bitcoin on there with that for the first year. And then since last like February, I was buying Ethereum with it. Ethereum was like 80 bucks. It's like 1400 bucks now. It's like every dollar I put in there is up like that I put in back then is made like 10 times. So like, yeah, that 10 bucks I invested could be like $90, yeah, a hundred dollars in a year. And you, I never even noticed it being gone Mm -hmm. because like, you know, it rounds up and then like once you trigger, like once it like, compiles like 10 bucks or 15 bucks that's when it buys it doesn't buy three cents each day because it wouldn't make sense mm-hmm. like every couple of days it buys a little bit you don't notice it it's like you bought a sandwich you know and the, and if you do that for a really long time you will i mean you could literally get wealthy doing that right that's you literally get wealthy investing like 10 bucks a day so and how would i pick a bitcoin how would i choose one i, I would i mean i think you just don't even overthink it just pick bitcoin just, oh, just, just Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Oh, wow. Bitcoin or, is the market. Like when I talk about buying like a, a, a fund, like if you were buying stocks to buy a fund that tracks the market, yeah, Bitcoin is basically that fund for the whole crypto market. Mm. You know what I mean? Like everything runs on, is, is based on Bitcoin. And you'll see like if Bitcoin moves a lot, like all the other shit just gets destroyed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is Satoshi uh, a, a smart way to also invest or should we stay away from satoshi what you think no that is bitcoin so like you would be bought like satoshis is just a term for like a fraction of a bitcoin okay right so like it's like you, what if you're saying i'm in buying satoshis you, you're buying bitcoin the person who uh wrote the bitcoin white paper that invented bitcoin or whatever is named satoshi nakamoto and nobody knows if that's like a dude or a girl or a group of people. Yeah, or no one knows. Totally the whole, like the creative yeah, because right? because a Bitcoin costs like I don't know forty thousand dollars or something crazy. Like one Bitcoin costs forty thousand. dollars And people think you need to buy one because, like, on the stock market, if you want to buy a share of something, you have to buy the whole share. You right. can buy five dollars of a Bitcoin and you just get Satoshi's, like point oh 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 one Bitcoin. You know what I mean? So when someone's buying Satoshi's, they're buying pieces of the Bitcoin, pretty much. Right. Yeah. 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 Fractional that's Bitcoin. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I thank you for dealing with our, you know, our dumbass. <laughs> thank you too. You guys, you would, you'd be surprised, oh. man. And for honestly, man, I was not much different a few years ago. Like you talk, and so to like your point, Rich, like you're never, it's you're never too old to start, right? Doing that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't, like you know, I didn't start. I started way late. Like I said, I would try. Like I had a Roth IRA like two or three times. I've like closed out a Roth IRA for a penalty because I needed that money for something else. Right. Like I just, you know, was irresponsible about it. So like, even though I tried, like I never really until the last five or six years, and I have a family and shit, you know, like did mm-hmm. I really get truly responsible about it? And I'm 44, you know what I mean? So like mm-hmm. better now than never. It's great, Yo, man. before this conversation, my only knowledge of the stock market was the movie Trading Places. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you you want to know what? That's exactly what the Reddit dudes did. Really? Oh, that's Eddie. That's Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean that. That's that's Dan, that's Dan Aykroyd and, and Eddie. Frozen yeah. concentrated orange juice. Effectively, yeah. very similar to what you just saw Reddit do to to the stock market. What Dang. what what do you think's gonna? Do you think it's anything's gonna change? Like now that if it does, it'll be if it does, it'll be bad. Really? Because every time they pat, like all the regulation is like to protect you, right? right? They regulate, you can't do this, you can't do that to protect you. But at the end of the day, it always ends up hurting the little dude. So what they'll probably do is pass some stupid regulation, which will tell you what you can't do to protect you from yourself, mm-hmm. which will make it easier for the big players to do whatever they do. So basically all of the, all the, plant, that, the plant that was seeded for all, all these regular people to invest, right? They're going to invest and you're thinking a lot of them are going to end up losing a lot of money and they, or, you know, 
hopefully if not. They try to like if they try to like trade or capitalize on something that's happening like right now. Yeah, yeah, because like you got to be perfect. You saw that, right? Like right. maybe you were if you were really early and you were able to sell it, but like if you bought it anywhere in the middle right now, you're sitting there going, "Do I hold it? Do I mm-hmm. sell it? What do I do?" Like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, anytime you like you one of the like really for trading but investing as well as well like one of the most important things to understand is when you buy something you need to know what your plan is to sell it like did you buy it at 50 because you wanted to sell it at 200 did you actually sell it at 200 when it went to 200 like did you try to sell it at 300 you know what i mean so like Mm -hmm. if you don't have a plan when you're going to exit when you get there to make the decision you're going to panic interesting Mm. so So that's why yeah so tesla stock got away from me but i planned to sell it at that price if it got there so i sold it you know what i mean like i didn't know it was going to keep going up could have gone back down you stuck to your plan yeah (laughs) (laughs) so so basically all that happened was a lot of when after this gamestop shit happened all it all it basically did was scare a bunch of head funds uh hedge fund people and all the big players and now they're like hmm we got to start regulating this shit so this doesn't happen again is that right? Is that you think, it, yeah, that's accurate. The dude, the same dude, the same dude I talked to yesterday, uh, telling you, I mean, I, it was like I was having this same conversation with a dude who was more experienced and right. educated than me and been doing it longer. And he was like, You think, and th- this dude is like as Wall Street as it gets. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like he's been at it for, he's in his 70s, or whatever. And he was like, Do you think that like Congress writes the laws? And I was like, And we both joked, we was like, Congress doesn't even read the laws. Right. Like those, you, you've seen it, like the stimulus package they talk about is like 500 pages long or something. Nobody read that. They just vote. You know what I mean? He's like, so who do you think writes the laws? He's like the dudes at Goldman Sachs and like the lobbyists and the whatever, like they write it. The congressmen don't even read it. They pass it. So at the end of the day, the, the hedge funds and these big financial institutions, they're the ones who are making the laws to protect themselves in the guise of making sure that you don't make a bad decision. I mean, in this country, like, I don't know if you know anything about accreditation laws or anything like that, but like to invest in most good investments in the United States, you have to be rich. And if you're under a certain threshold, you're literally not allowed. Like if you started a business and said to these two dudes right here, you said, I want you to invest in it. They might not be able to, if they're not wealthy enough, depending on the structure of how your business is set up. Right. Like you have to, I think, I mean, I can't remember the threshold for accreditation. You have to have either a million in assets or like you have to prove on your tax return that you made like over 250 a year for two or three years or something to be allowed to invest in like any venture capital, to be able to give money to a hedge fund, to do any of that. So they say that that's protecting you because you'll make a bad financial decision Mm -hmm. decision and give some idiot your money. But in reality, it's locking you out of the opportunity to make money the same way that rich people do. Right. So- that's how rich people are getting rich. Right. So what, what, what basically happened is, one, we got to see David win, win one battle, right? Pretty much yeah. with the whole GameStop. We, we got to see that win one battle. Um, but what it also did was it just opened the blinds to what's really going on in Wall Street. And then yeah. now that's the good side. That's the good Nobody's, thing, right? there's no Yeah, I think there's no, nobody. Like, you can't look at it and be like, oh, this is fair. Yeah. So that's like, a good thing. You know, yeah, yeah, but do I do I believe that like David's gonna keep, you know, right. pop, popping off popping off rocks from his slingshot? No, mm-hmm. I think that uh they're gonna make sure that that doesn't happen. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. You know what I mean? But yeah. like they literally turned off trading. Mm-hmm. They said, Oh, y'all think you're cute, you can't buy it anymore. Damn. I mean, how is that? You know what I mean? Like that, and and people got destroyed. Right. Like destroyed regular people. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, the hedge fund didn't get destroyed. They turned off the buy button. <laughs> yeah, they, they were short. Price went back down far enough that they could probably cover their ass and not go out of business. And then they turned the machines back as trading places. Yeah, turn those machines back on. You know, at the end. Damn. Wow. So they're not going to end up. They're not going to end up homeless like a. Like those two brothers, right? <laughs> <laughs> Turn into trading places. Uh, Randolph, Randolph, <laughs> Randolph, we're back, <laughs> coming to America. Looking- I'm still not talking to you. Um, yeah. <laughs> two homeless dudes. Yeah, that's not going to happen to them. Mm. Wow. I have another question, uh, Scott. Do you think will Bitcoin ever be loaded up into a debit card and be used in like a grocery store and stuff? Already like that? is. Yeah, it already is. So, they, yeah, and and now. Um, 
there's companies like uh, I know BlockFi is one of them that are doing mm -hmm. like full on Visa uh, credit cards that like pay rewards in Bitcoin, just like you get travel miles or anything like that. They have those. Yeah. There's a lot of crypto debit cards that exist already where like you're loading it up and paying. But the problem is, like I touched on earlier, the taxes structure with Bitcoin is so fucked up. So like if you they don't view it as money. Like they got the United States government, other governments are more reasonable. Like they have good, so they view it like it's stock or it's property. So mm -hmm. that means that if you buy something with Bitcoin, according to the government, you're selling Bitcoin. Ah, uh, okay, right. So when you buy a cup of coffee or groceries with your Bitcoin, even if it's with a debit card, mm -hmm. you just sold Bitcoin. So like, say you bought that Bitcoin at a hundred dollars and it's now worth a thousand dollars. You now owe taxes on that right. ten ten times profit just for buying dollars. coffee, just on that little bit that you sold. But like, when you when you buy coffee with a dollar, you're not selling a dollar. That's a good clarification because mm. it's not a currency, right? It's a, it's still seen as an investment, but it's it's but as soon as Here. you pull yeah here. As soon as you pull any kind of money out of it, even if it's for a dollar fifty or two dollars, you got they're gonna tax you. Because it's almost right. like and, you're, you're and not only that, out of that. Yeah. you're the one who's responsible to track all that. Mm. So if you buy best. a thousand things in a year with Bitcoin, you got to track that, the value of it at the time that you did it, pay taxes on it. It's They make it very, very, that's very a, different. That, yeah, Most countries opinion, are not yeah. like that. The United States is really, really When, when did they start taxing? Because I, I heard they weren't doing it. I mean, so officially forever, you should have been paying the taxes. I just don't think it was on their radar because it was so small. But I, really in 2017, they like, right. finally, it was like, they okay. sat down in Congress and were like, yeah, this is going to be taxed like this and whatever. I remember. And I the remember. Next, yeah. yeah. It, was in, it was in the news. I remember. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and now like, it's like, not only did they start to tax it, they went like as hardcore as you basically can. So like your taxes are so bananas. So that's only in this country though. If you go to any yeah. other country. A few, a few countries, but there's countries and, and what's crazy. So like, if you're American, obviously like every time I talk about this on Twitter and shit, people are like. Just move, son. Like, just move to Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> just go on overseas. Move, move to Portugal, bro. Like, and, and I'm like, first of all, like, if I move to Portugal, I still owe taxes in the United States. I'm an American citizen, right? We tax on our citizenship. So, like, it's even worse. If I move to Portugal, I'm paying taxes for roads and shit here that I'm not even using. You know what I mean? But, like, <laughs> you would have to renounce your citizenship. Like you have to become not an American to not pay oh, taxes in the United States, no matter where you live in the world, they, they come after you. But the one place you can go if you're an American is Puerto Rico mm. because oh, yeah, Puerto yeah. Rico is a territory and not, and not, uh, and has their own tax laws and you don't pay federal income taxes there. So taxes across the board on like capital gains and stuff, if you're a Bitcoin trader or like whatever is 4% mm. instead of like 37% if you're in the highest tax bracket. Right. You know what I mean? So like like all the Bitcoin millionaires who are American and don't want to stop being American move Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico. Oh shit. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Domingo. Whatever it is. One more thing though. Uh do you see West Fargo Bank of America ever storing Bitcoin? Yeah. It I do. So yeah, and I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, but uh they're getting to, they want everybody wants their piece, right? But so the OCC, the office of the comptroller of currency of the United States, um they made a clarification a few months back that said that banks like real banks can custody Bitcoin. So like eventually if the banks structure in a manner that they want to do that, they are allowed now, just like they hold your dollars to hold your Bitcoin. So like your average person will be able to put Bitcoin in the bank and know that it's secure. So yes, I do think that that's coming. That's going to happen. But that also means that like, you know, I don't know if you guys understand like fractional reserve banking or anything but like when you put money in a bank they lend your money out yeah your money's yeah, yeah, not yeah, in yeah. the bank right right right. it's just not sitting there yeah right and they lend it out and they make crazy money and they don't give it to you mm -hmm. but yeah. like if there's a run on the bank your money is not sitting there kind you know of what i mean it's insured but yeah. it's not sitting there. we've seen it in the past right so mm -hmm. kind of like analytics right for all of these yeah. websites and everything. Yeah. Yeah. so they would do that to you like so i don't know like a lot of a lot of people who truly believe in bitcoin wouldn't want to like have their Bitcoin sitting in a bank because it then becomes basically the same system that they're trying to get out of. You know what I mean? Man. Got it. But yeah, I think every institution is going to eventually, Bitcoin will just be like another asset that's part of like their offering. Hey, yo, Scott, 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got to just let you know, this is the most questions Jamie has ever asked on any I'm, No, I'm surprised. <laughs> so, I, I wrote down about 25 like, questions. Wow. <laughs> Somebody, I, some, like, I really want to know. Some of these questions are from your homies. I used to flip sneakers too, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. Ta-da. No, some of my homies is like, yo, ask him this, ask yeah, him yeah. that. Because like, that, bank, right, that cool. bank of America Wells Fargo question did not come out your ass. That came no, out no, no, that, was, that yeah. was my boy Lorenzo. Oh, yeah, okay. And the other one was Steven. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's, that's, but it's, it's a really good question. I do yeah. think that's the future. Like, th- listen, man, if there's one thing you know about any government, especially this one, is they just want their peace and they want their control. Mm-hmm. So if it gets big enough, they're going to regulate the shit out of it and try to like take whatever they can from it and make it theirs. That's just what they do, right? To expect otherwise would be pretty naive. So one more question. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about Elon Musk jumping into all this? And like Love Dave it. Portnoy and those type of guys just jumping into something they've never been about. Well, Dave Portnoy got smashed. He, he tried to come in and then he lost a bunch of money and sold and then it went way up. <laughs> but uh, I love it, man. We need people like that understand that this is bad for like what's happening is bad for the average person. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like Elon Musk is the richest man in the world, but he's kind of a man of the people when you think about the things that he says. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And 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 Dave Portnoy, man, that dude should be like Time Magazine Man of the Year. Oh no, no. A lot of people like take his older shenanigans and bring it to light, but that guy's pretty fucking smart. Dude, he's raised like, for, but forget even that. Like, A, he's the one who like sparked this whole generation of like young investors and shit. So yeah, maybe yeah, they're yeah. like making bad decisions, but at least he got young people thinking about putting their money away mm-hmm. and like investing and making money. But more importantly, like he's raised like, I don't know how much, but I believe it's like hundreds of millions of dollars for small business. Bu- he's yeah, like single handedly doing more for small business than the government is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's he crazy. Does, uh- it's yeah, crazy. The dude's an absolute legend. And I, same as you said, I used to like at the beginning, I was like, this dude's a clown, like whatever, you know? And then I realized, nah, man. And he like tells it how it is. Like this Robin Hood thing, he's like telling these dudes he's going to wreck their lives and I'm coming after you. Like that dude, Vlad for Robin yeah, Hood. Like yeah. you yeah, see yeah, him yeah. on there. He doesn't care. <laughs> I just got, dude's got like, dude's got elephant balls. Crazy. E- Elon yeah. Musk was on Clubhouse, like hosting a room with, uh, with Vlad, Two right? Two Vlad from the Robin yeah. Hood. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. I, I yeah. thought I thought so, it was impressive what they did with that app because I thought that app was like. Dude, I still have it. So like, yeah, I'm like the old dude that's like, oh, wow, <laughs> just call me, bro. Like, <laughs> X me. I don't know what are we talking about. Everybody's on Clubhouse. I, I think that'll be. So I like, think that'll be a great app for you, though. Honestly. Too, yeah, everybody me. keeps telling me like yeah. I'm on there. I just haven't like. The few times I tried to like check into a room, it was like a lot of people trying to sound smarter than they were, and I had to check yeah, out. Yeah, like that's kind of yeah. how I felt. But I, yeah. I have a feeling that I just kind of haven't really. If you dug if in you could move out. your following, some of your following to Clubhouse and maybe host, yeah. you know, something every week over there for an hour, I think that'll be real beneficial for you. Yeah, well, I, I think want, that. Yeah, I want to actually plug. I want to plug your podcast. I love the oh, name of. You. I love the name of your podcast. By the yeah, way, yeah, it's the best. The Wolf of All Streets, right? That's a great yes. fucking name. And uh, you're, w- w- when does the episodes come out usually? For uh, Every podcast? Tuesday and every Thursday Tuesday. morning. Uh, I mean, I don't even know what time they hit. Like, they hit Spotify and Apple probably like 6 o'clock in the morning, you know, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then they hit YouTube at like 9 or 10, 9 or 10 a.m. All right. And, you know, for me, man, so like what we're doing here, like you guys grilling me with questions yeah. and like uh, I want to understand this shit. That's like... To me, like podcasting is the greatest job in the world, man. <laughs> if I don't understand something, like I call someone who understands it and just because like they want to hear themselves talk, they'll talk to me like they're yeah. my college professor for an hour and just answer my questions. It's the greatest <laughs> shit in the world. <laughs> Ta-da! That's how I feel. Everything, everything I'm telling y'all is some shit that I recycled from somebody that I learned on my That's podcast. how it is. That's how it is. That's how it is, yo. This Spinning is great. It down, yeah. yeah. No, we really appreciate you coming through, man, coming on. And yo, Anytime. Fam. It's great seeing you. I haven't seen you in 15 years, man. It's it's awesome. Yeah, and I, it's uh, you look the same. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> you look look. You I look, will say, DJing keeps you young, man. Yeah. Like I don't know, like no. all my friends who didn't do like who like had desk jobs look a lot older than me. So really, it's no, a darkness man. that keeps. I'm, the skin I'm, I'm 60 years old. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying. I'm saying, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I know you're using that touch of touch of gray or men's whatever. Yeah, you know. sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh man, yo, Scott, thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. I I, I want to check in maybe I don't know in a few months or a year or so and see. Yeah, what I'll else do is going this anytime. There's, yeah. I, there's nothing more I love than just 
talking shit about markets. Yeah. So Scott, if I me. invest, if I invest a hundred dollars on Bitcoin, I could put Bitcoin on my Twitter bio <laughs> after that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think, yeah, I think, uh, I think they don't. It won't work until you buy a hundred dollars, but then all of a sudden the hashtag comes up. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. don't, Got just it. don't put financial advisor anywhere. No, 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 anything. no. no. Yeah, do Bitcoin, not financial <laughs> advice. <Yeah. laughs> all right, man. Thanks a lot, Scott. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. So if you want to watch this episode on YouTube or view some of our older episodes as well, you can go to youtube.com slash road podcast, like, comment, subscribe. We post new episodes every Thursday, every Thursday, y'all without fail. So definitely come check out the new episodes on YouTube on Thursdays and on Fridays on YouTube, we've been posting our older Sunday battles from Twitch. So Jamie and I have been working really hard to get these older battles on YouTube for you guys to watch. So every Friday you can check these older battles on YouTube. And you can also check the newer battles on Sundays at twitch.tv slash roadpodcast. Make sure to follow us on Twitch and uh, subscribe if you can. So definitely check that out. And um, uh, Thanks, yo, Scott, Scott, thank you, man. I appreciate yeah, you guys, it. Guys, anytime, literally anytime, man. Yeah, yeah. I thank appreciate you, it. Appreciate Everything it. was gold, man. I hope uh, we didn't bore you too hey, much. Hey, man, with someone this had thing. to school me first. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I learned it the same way. Cool.